So Nobel laureate Carl Sagan said, science is a way of thinking much more than a body of knowledge. In the history of science, we can see several examples for this. The Wright brothers invented the flying machine with no college degree. Thomas Edison made several inventions while he only had three months of official schooling. Michael Faraday made several contributions to the fields of electricity and electromagnetism while he had no formal education. All these inventors definitely had the way of thinking that Carl Sagan was talking about. When you take up a science project, you push yourself into this thought process. In other words, you step into the shoes of a scientist. At first, I was not consciously aware of this thought process, but I stumbled into it through my science projects. And as a result, I ended up discovering a lot about this scientific mindset. I also realized that this mindset is not only useful for science projects, but for any project that you take up in your life. Now, when I say project, I'm not talking about glitter and poster boards. When I say project, I mean setting a goal with a deadline, creating a plan on how to achieve it, carrying out that plan, and overcoming obstacles along the way. For example, making your own club at school, working on getting good grades, trying to be good at a sport, or even learning music can all be taken up as projects. In fact, the best way to achieve anything is to take it up as a project. My story began when I was in grade seven. At that time, the teacher introduced this class as a special event called the Science Fair. I decided to participate with a color disc. A color disc is a cardboard disc with the seven colors of the rainbow painted on it. This was the most fascinating scientific device I had seen at that time, because when you spin the disc, it appears white. And to me, this was magical. So I made the disc, and I meticulously painted it with the seven colors. The only challenge was to spin it, but I thought I could easily do that using a pinwheel. But a pinwheel turned out to be too slow. This was a little disappointing, but I decided to go around my house and try to find anything that could spin the disc. I tried the electric drill, the blender, fan, another fan, the electric coffee stir, but nothing was producing the magic I was looking for. Nothing was fast enough. This was a little unexpected, and I was at a dead end. I had no clue how to get out. So for the time being, I decided to focus on making stronger discs, since my speed requirement was way higher now. As I was painting those discs, an idea struck me. I thought, why not paint several sets of the seven colors on the disc instead of using a single set? Therefore, the seven colors would repeat several times in each rotation. This idea worked magically, and my color disc finally started turning white when I rotated it. That project won me a silver medal at the Regional Science Fair. But I felt prouder than the gold medalist because I felt like I had invented something. Looking back, I learned a pretty important lesson from that seemingly insignificant experience. And that lesson was to think outside the box, or in other words, to be creative. When there's a solution to a problem, find a creative one. Let me ask you guys a riddle. A tall truck goes under a low bridge. The truck gets wedged under the bridge. The truck is stuck. What would you do to get the truck out? The usual answers to this problem are to either cut the truck or to somehow raise the bridge. But these solutions attack the problem right where it happens. When you think outside the box, you solve the problem in less obvious ways. In this case, you could lower the truck by deflating the tires. How many of you thought of that answer? Or a similar answer, like lowering the truck with an extra weight? Oh, so many people. Awesome. Good job. Thinking outside the box is the first lesson I wanted to share with you. The following year, I was in grade 8, and I was still inspired by my success. I wanted to participate in the science fair again. The only problem was I didn't have a project idea. 
This seemed like a bigger problem than the color disk. I asked around for project ideas, but most of the answers were either I don't know or Coke and Mentos. I wanted an idea so bad that I kept thinking about it all the time. Soon, everything around me started to look like a potential science fair project. One day, I was playing the piano. And as usual, I mused about turning it into a science project. Only I didn't know how, but that time, I decided to sit and seriously think about it in detail. I had a meeting with myself, and we had a long discussion. And together, we ended up generating a lot of questions about the piano, its working, sound waves, frequencies, and so on. And finally, I did a project on measuring sound frequencies. It even led me to design my own frequency-based weighing machine. It's pretty beautiful, right? <laughs> that project took me to the National Science Fair. The lesson I learned was something Isaac Newton had said. Someone asked Newton how he discovered gravity. Newton replied by saying, I did it by thinking about it all the time. My title for this lesson, be obsessed. The two great things about being obsessed are that one, you never give up on your project, and two, you keep improving your project all the time. These are qualities that are great for any project you take up. Now, sometimes when you do a project, you need tools or uh, materials that are either too expensive or just don't exist. Last year in my project, I needed to set a laser beam at specific angles and then move it around without changing that angle. I did not have a specific device that would do this, but the concept reminded me of a drafting machine. On a drafting machine, you can set the ruler at precise angles and then move it around without changing that angle. I decided to adapt it to hold my laser beam. Drafting machine from Craigslist, $30. Laser pen from Staples, $10. Sticking them together, priceless. The lesson I learned is something I like to call lateral application. It's my own terminology, and it means to use an ordinary device or concept for an extraordinary purpose. Now, this may sound similar to thinking outside the box, but in my definition, it specifically applies to finding substitutes. If you're doing a science project, lateral application is extremely important. In fact, many science projects are based on this concept. For example, using vegetables to make plastic, GPS to help the visually impaired, or using your smartphone to measure your heart rate are all examples of using ordinary devices or concepts for extraordinary purposes, or in other words, lateral application. This concept is also useful for other types of projects. You don't want to give up on a project just because you didn't have the right tools or methods. You need to find substitutes and move ahead. This year, my project was on free space laser communication. The project was to design a system that could transmit a sound signal through a laser beam. However, the project had to be a bit harder than I expected, and I was only able to develop a basic system for the regional science fair. Fortunately, I went at the regionals and I had three weeks before the National Science Fair. I decided to use those three weeks and develop a new system. I had to spend sleepless nights to complete the new and more advanced system. However, my hard work paid off. I won a bronze medal at the National Science Fair. I learned a pretty important lesson. I named it, as Edison would have called it, 99% perspiration. Or in other words, be hardworking. No matter what project you do, there's no replacement for hard work. Now, some of these projects that I shared with you may have sounded a bit difficult. But the fact is, I was not alone. Many people have helped me. Sometimes to de develop display material, sometimes to fabricate equipment, and sometimes even to learn new concepts. And some of those people are even in the audience today. And it was truly this 
standing on the shoulders of giants. Fact is, there's a lot of help available out there, but we have to look for it. I explored every possible resource I could imagine. Once I walked into Save and asked the pharmacist to help me get precise measurements of small quantities of salt. And we even ended up becoming pretty good friends. Another time I contacted a software engineer in Germany to modify a program I was using to measure sound frequencies. I call this process 360 degree scanning. Or in other words, be aware. This is an extremely important lesson. Doing science projects for four years won me some medals. It also taught me some practical lessons on science. However, these were not the true rewards. The true rewards were these valuable life lessons that I just shared with you. Let's have a quick recap. Lesson one, be creative. Explore the less obvious possibilities and solve your problems in creative ways. Lesson two, be obsessed. Keep thinking about your project all the time and keep improving it in every possible way you can imagine. Lesson three, be lateral. Use ordinary devices or concepts for extraordinary purposes. When you don't have the right tools, methods, or even project ideas, substitute. Lesson four, be hardworking. As Edison said, genius is 1% inspiration, 99% perspiration. Lesson five, be aware. There's a lot of help available out there. Explore every possible resource you can imagine. These five lessons were extremely helpful for me. I hope that my stories will inspire you to create projects for all your dreams, and I hope that these five lessons will help you complete those projects successfully. And one last thing. Never ignore your small ideas, because everything starts small. Newton didn't ignore that unimportant falling apple, and it carried the seeds to his greatest discovery. In the same way, your small idea may carry the seeds to your greatest success. Thank you. <laughs>